For Native cultures, we actually need to start out by going over a few vocabulary words. When we talked about themes in social studies, we talked about history being the study of change over time. But there is a clear difference between something called prehistory and history. And that is prehistory is a record of change over time, but it's not a written record. History is a written record. So what we'll cover with these native cultures is going to be prehistory, where there's not a written record of what they were doing before somebody came to Texas and then took a written history. So they wrote down the things that happened. Historians are people that study change over time. Archaeology and anthropologists work with artifacts. So they go and look at different objects that were part of a culture and find out more information about them. We're not gonna do the mystery artifact story right here, so we're gonna skip that one. We'll talk about Mesoamerica here in just a second. Now, pre-contact is these different cultures before anyone from the Eastern Hemisphere made contact with them. So before they met anyone that was from Europe. Primary and secondary sources, just know primary is your best source. Those are those artifacts. Any object or record that was at the event is a primary source. And then anything that's told about that event later on is a secondary source. Mesoamerica is also called Middle America. It's that little section that is between North and South America. That's why we call it Middle, because it's in the middle. Now we talked about in themes with geography, that geography influences where people are going to live. So we need to talk about how geography influenced where the Native Americans lived. Let's say you're a member of an Indian tribe, which is the Native Americans, and your tribe has to move to another location, and you must leave the tribe. What would you look for first in order to settle in an area? How would you adapt to the environment? And the answer would be that would depend on what your native culture is because different things are stressed. But one thing that's gonna be common between all of these different cultures is they're gonna require water. So where there's water, there will be life. the different cultures so you see the different tribal groups now you need to know what type of culture that they're a part of there are four main cultures in Texas the southeastern culture the western Gulf culture the plains culture and the Pueblo culture we'll discuss what that means for each group here in just a minute the first main culture group that we'll talk about is the southeastern culture now the three different tribal groups that are included in this culture are the Caddo the Wichita and the Atakapan. The Caddo Native Americans lived in the Gulf Coastal Plains. They lived in Northeast Texas, close to where we lived, on the Neches and the Sabine Rivers. They had agriculture. That means that they farmed and built permanent farming villages. So when you live in a permanent place, that means you are sedentary. Now they burned their forest in order to Slash and burn is the method they, they use to provide land to grow their food. They grew beans, corn, squash, sunflower seeds, and tobacco. This culture had very clear gender roles. So what that means is that the men had a job and the women had a job. The men would go out and clear the fields, make room for farmlands and they usually would do this in a circular fashion because they are going to practice something called crop rotation. The women would stay back in the village and they would take care of whatever harvest that they got from growing their food. So that means they would put all the food back so that they could use it later on in the year. Now this is going to be a matrilineal society. That means that the family lines are traced through the mother. So you knew what family that you belonged to because you traced who your family was through your mother. What's different about their society is that they had a very large trade network. That means that they took the crops that they grew and the different tools that they made and they traded them with other societies. So they had peaceful relationships with most cultures because they had things that other culture groups needed to trade to survive. 
They had confederacies, that's their type of government. They built temple mounds and had an organized religion in a very large population. They also lived longer than most culture groups. In the picture, this is an example of the Caddo and what a village would look like in this type of culture. They lived in beehive-shaped huts. That's the type of house that they lived in. They even had workstations that they created. This would be what the women would do during the day. You can see a temple mount in the background. Another group that's part of the Southeastern culture, and by the way, whenever we say Southeastern culture, we're talking about the Southeastern region of the United States. So they're in the Southeastern part of the United States. So that includes groups that are in Texas, like this next group, and that is the Wichita. The Wichita lived in the Central Plains and the Rolling Plains. They lived along the Red River, and they had four different tribal groups within their Wichita nation, and they had different ways of identifying themselves, and one of the main ways was they tattooed their bodies. They were called raccoon eyes because part of their tattoos covered their eyes to make it look like they were wearing a mask like they were a raccoon. They also lived in permanent settlements and permanent villages, so that means that they were sedentary, they stayed in one place, and those that stay in one place will be able to farm. That means they have agriculture. They grew corn, beans, and squash, and they also were able to domesticate horses. That means they could train horses to be able to use them for their own purposes. So they would ride the horses to go hunt buffalo and deer. When they hunted the buffalo though and used horses, this put them in competition with a group called the Plains Culture. So they went to war a lot with that group. They also will die out from diseases. So that's how their culture is going to kind of peter out and that is their population decreased due to war and because of different diseases that were brought by the Europeans. This is an example of a Wichita grass house, or it's also called a hay house. The Atakapon is the last group that's part of the southeastern culture that lived in Texas. They lived in the Gulf Coastal Plain, and they lived right on the Gulf of Mexico, near where present-day Houston is. So you could say that they lived around Houston, between the Caddo and the Gulf of Mexico. They farmed, and it's possible that they learned their farming techniques from the Caddo. They hunted buffalo and alligators. They used bows and arrows for that. That's the type of tools that they used. They also had fishing hooks. They fished a lot because they are on along the coast. They liked to live in villages that were close to marshy areas where they could still farm. Because of where they lived, there are going to be a lot of mosquitoes. So what they did is they took an alligator after they would hunt an alligator, they would scrape the fat out of the alligator and melt it down into an oil that they could put on their bodies in order to repel the mosquitoes. They also made huts from brush and they made pottery and woven baskets. The Atakapan people were able to take trees cut them down and then they would dig out the trunk of the canoe so they would burn the top of it and then scrape, burn the top and scrape until they had dug out the shape of a canoe. And this picture is a picture showing you a man who is maneuvering through a waterway between um, different pieces of land so they could go through marshes, they could go through the wetlands, they could go up and down a river on the coast. Their society lived a little bit longer than this next group that we'll talk about because they were a little bit more advanced. To me, this next culture is one of the most fascinating cultures that there is. It's called the Western Gulf Culture. There are two groups in this culture. There are the Karankawa and the Kokwitakan. The Karankawa lived on the Gulf Coastal Plains near present-day Galveston and close to Corpus Christi. They were a nomadic people. They hunted with bows and arrows. They traded among their own villages and were very suspicious of people outside of their own culture. During the fall and the winter, they lived along the Gulf Coast. They used dugout canoes to migrate during the summer and move away from the coast. 
but they did camp near the rivers. Because they were located along the coast, it is assumed and evidence proves that they did trade with the Europeans. So the first people to come in contact with the Europeans, they would end up trading with them first. But this also means that they're going to end up exchanging germs so they catch the diseases first. And that is one of the main things that they will die out from. They lived in small huts called wigwams, and they usually camped near rivers and springs. They did not wear much clothing because, again, they're on the coast, and they live in warmer climates. They painted themselves with very bright colors as part of some of their rituals. They are also going to use alligator fat to keep mosquitoes away from them. This is a picture of a Karankawa village. In the background, you see the little huts that are the wigwams. This is one of their fishing villages. This is one of the places that they would camp. So anyone that is nomadic, usually they have traditional camping grounds. So once a year, they'll go back to a certain type of campground. So in this picture, you also will see that there are um, boats in the front, in the foreground. And those boats, those ships, are to represent European ships. That's what you can kind of see there. Since these are the first people to come in contact with those Europeans. In this picture you can see a close-up of another fishing village that is on the coast. In the background you see the dugout canoes. In the foreground you can see where they dried fish so that they could take things with them. So if you, if you dehydrate fish then you can carry it with you. They also have a person in the foreground who is making a fishing net because most of these villages will end up being fishing villages. The second group in the Western Gulf culture is called the Kahutakan. Now they lived in the dry brush country in the South Texas Plains. It's highlighted at the top of your screen where the map is. So they are going to have to adapt to their environment and they are able to do this very well in order to survive. Now they share a common language with all of their groups and because it's too dry to farm, in the area that they live, they're going to end up being nomadic. So they're going to move from one place to another. Now nomadic groups move around because they are hunter-gatherers. That means that in order to survive, they hunt for their food and they gather food. They don't farm, they don't have agriculture. They'll hunt wild game, deer, antelope, rabbits, javelinas, which are almost like wild pigs, but not exactly. Now this doesn't mean that they don't eat plants. They did eat cacti mesquite beans, they ate various types of nuts, they ate lizards, they ate ant eggs, spiders, snakes, and grub worms. All different types of creepy crawlies. Sometimes we call this the episode of survivor group because that's kind of what their lifestyle looked like. It was every day was an episode of survivor. And sometimes we look at them as like a, a little bit more intense version of Timon and Pumbaa. They are going to have all night celebrations when they do find a large haul of food called matotes. And they're also going to be able to develop ways to survive on the land very well. They use gourds that would dry into a hard shell container that would end up being used to gather water and carry water with them. They also made woven baskets to carry things with them, almost like a woven backpack. They did not build permanent houses because they're always on the move. You're not going to carry a permanent house with you. They also will die out from diseases from the Europeans and attacks from the Apache. You'll notice on the map that the Apache territory is going to be neighboring the Cahuitacan territory. So because the Apache are very aggressive, whenever there are times when they cross paths, they are going to almost destroy these different groups of Coquitacan that they come in contact with. We'll talk more about the Apache here in just a minute. The next group is the Plains culture. Their way of life was centered around four main things. Horses, hunting grounds, teepees, and hunting bands. So horses, they trained their horses, they domesticated them and used them in a way that made them dominate the plains. They will have traditional hunting grounds where they hunt buffalo. Their houses will be teepees 
and they will have a culture where they train to be warriors in these groups of young men or bands of young men. The first group that we'll talk about is called the Tonkawa. The Tonkawa are in the Gulf Coastal Plains in the North Central Plains, Edwards Plateau type of area. They depended on buffalo for their food, clothing, and shelter. Pretty much the buffalo will be their everything. They did garden a little bit because they competed with the other plains groups and they ended up having to, having to garden in order to supplement their food. They ate fish, deer, birds, rabbits, rattlesnakes, and turtles. Now they're able to have agriculture, we should go back to that, because they have traditional hunting grounds where they move maybe twice a year. So because they only move a couple of times a year, and have these hunting bands that go out and are the ones that do the main movement, there are some people that will be home in their village for that time that will end up growing for a growing season. And then they'll get up and they'll pack and they'll go to their different land. The same will be true for this next group called the Lapan Apache. And the Apache are known for their aggression. That means they were very aggressive as a people. Now the region that they lived in was called the Mountains and Basins, but they moved into that southern part of the plains. They planted crops and lived in farming communities for certain times of the year. They grew beans, watermelons, and pumpkins. They were buffalo hunters and gatherers, and they, that was their main means of survival. They relied so much on the buffalo, it was their everything also. They may have traded some, but they didn't have friendly relationships with other tribes because they were so aggressive. But you may want to note that that aggression is only towards outsiders, those who are not Apache. I want you to take a look at this picture of an Apache encampment that's in the Texas Hill Country. One of the things you can be looking for is what stands out to you first, and then list the different things that you see. So what do you see? And then we'll talk about what that means in class. This next group is also Apache, but they're called the Mescalero Apache. They're a little bit different from the other group of Apache, the Lapan Apache, because of where they lived. So their region's gonna be west of the mountains between the Lapan Apache and present day El Paso, where New Mexico is. So they are kind of spread out a little bit further than the borders and the territories of what Texas is today. Now they depended less on the buffalo and more on their farming, and they were mountain villages. If the Apache were the most aggressive, then the Comanche were the most powerful group in the Plains culture. We call them the Lord of the Plains. They are so powerful in the height of their culture. So the region that they lived in was the Great Plains and the High Plains, close to present-day Amarillo, Lubbock, the Leno Estacado, and the Edwards Plateau. They were a warlike culture. That means they trained their children from a small age all the way up until they were in adulthood to go to war. They used horses and trained them expertly. They were nomadic. They depended on the buffalo, which was what most of the wars were about because all of these plains group depend on the same creature, they're gonna end up having territory wars, fighting over different hunting grounds. We think they may have traded some only when they needed it. They were very skilled fighters. They controlled so much of the plains, they were able to name a large territory called Comanchera. They did not have friendly relationships with other tribes, but they were able to form alliances. Now friendships and alliances are different. A friendship means you are friends with that group of people. An alliance means you only come in contact and rely on one another. If one of your groups is attacked, you will fight for one another. Now I chose this picture for you to look at because I want you to see the skill of horsemanship with this group of people. So be sure to take a look and see what you notice about this picture and be ready to talk about it in class. The last Plains culture group to arrive in Texas was the Kiowa. They lived in the Great Plains, close to where the Panhandle is. They were allies with the Comanche. They fought for each other if they were in desperate need. They were nomadic, depended on hunting for survival, but they got last dibs on 
the different hunting grounds for the buffalo. So they did eat antelope, deer, and bear. They also made a thing called pemmican. Pemmican is almost like a meat paste that is made from dried buffalo and then you grind the buffalo into a powder and then add fats and juices back in it to make a paste. And they would use that as almost like a protein shake. They'd grab a scoop of it and eat it. When they were out on a hunt, they had an annual sun dance to prevent sickness. This was part of their religion. So in order to prevent sickness and disaster, they would dance to the sun. The last native cultures group that we're gonna look at is called the Pueblo culture. They lived in the mountains and basins region along the Rio Grande and settled mainly on the Rio Grande. Now sometimes the Rio Grande would dry up and they had to become nomadic, but they wanted to be sedentary farmers. They did depend on trading. They had large villages. They built houses around a central plaza, so a very organized type of society. Here's a good look at that. They also were known for their adobe homes. That's what their homes are called. They had flat roofs. They also made bows and arrows to hunt buffalo. This is what will get them in trouble. They made jewelry from copper and coral and turquoise, very beautiful types of jewelry. Now disease, drought, and attacks from the Apache, from going into the Apache hunting grounds is what is gonna cause these people to die out. Here's another look at the Pueblo culture's adobe. They also were known for their pottery. The Concho are also part of the Pueblo culture that lived in Texas, but we don't know a lot about them. We know they lived in the mountains and basins region, that they're closely linked to the Jumano or Humano. They did more hunting than farming, but like I said, very little is known about them.